Okay. Thank you all for coming this afternoon to I'm a paraprofessional girl guy in a, a professional world. Uh, Don Dale will be our presenter this afternoon. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to thank our sponsors, uh, Emerald uh, Data Networks, Equinox Open Library Initiative, and the Libraries of Mobius. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Dawn. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, now let's see, how do I share my screen? Um, there should be a little icon at the bottom of your screen. It's like right below the photos. Um, it should look like a, a computer monitor. Okay, got it, sorry. That's okay, I should have. Can everybody yeah. see it okay? Yep, yeah, looks good. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, okay, my name is Dawn Dale, and I am the Pines Services Specialist for Circulation. I've been with Pines for about 13 years. Um, before that, I was actually in the library for about eight years as a circulation manager. Um, I began doing this um, program. I'm a paraprofessional guy, girl, girl guy, living in a professional world um, several years ago. And I, it, it's very personal to me because I was that person, um, a paraprofessional living in a professional world. And I knew I could be more, but I didn't have that college degree. So, um, this one kind of hit me at home. I heard someone else do a similar program and actually I stole their title, but I did ask their permission first um, because I really, I really liked it and couldn't come up with a better one. So this program is going to focus on um, a lot today on how you can be part of the Evergreen community um, without being a programmer or having an MLS or, or whatever you think you might need to be part of that and just how to advance in your career um, without that degree or how to get that degree if that's what you need to, to be for where you're going. So, um, like I said, this one was kind of personal to me. And as we go through, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, in today's society, especially with the staffing problems everybody is having right now, um, there are so many companies that are dropping the degree and going for experience or skills um, in a, as a preference to, to the degree. And um, Google, for example, um, IBM, Apple, Okta, Okta, sorry, they are, they've all um, dropped degrees and going for skills instead. Um, there's other companies, Bank of America, Penguin Books, Netflix, and these are all big companies that you, you probably have heard of. So if the big companies are doing it, the smaller companies are going to be doing it as well. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity out there to advance in your career uh, if you have the skills to do what it is you want to do. So um, don't don't always think that you can't be that if you know just give yourself a chance. Okay, can you advance in the tech in the technical profession without a degree? Can you get um, what is it you want to do? Um, how do you get there? And what resources are available to help you reach your goals? These are the things we're going to cover today a little bit about how you can do things um, to help yourself. The first thing you have to have is confidence in yourself. You have to have the confidence to know that you can do something. If you can code, for example, then, then you should put your foot out there and, and code something, whether it's for Evergreen or just a web page for yourself. If you can code, give it a shot. Um, and those things that you do create on your own personal time um, that are outside of the box of even the library world, put those in your portfolio. Make a portfolio if you don't have one. Keep those things so you can say, look, this is what I can do. That'll help you a lot. Um, okay, a little bit more about me. Um, a number of years at well, I'd say about 15 or 16 years ago, 
I was working in the library system at Hall County. And, um, you know, we had just come, just began using Evergreen a couple of years before that. And there was, I just felt like I could do so much more if I had the, the tools to do it with. But in the libraries, of course, we don't have the permissions to do the things we wanted, wanted to do necessarily, um, because you can't give those permissions out to the libraries because everybody doesn't have those skills. So I went to the Pine Services Director in a meeting. We were in a meeting one day and I went to her and said, I want to work for Pines. I stepped out on that limb and said, this, uh, this is what I want to do, but I don't have a degree. But I'm really smart and I, and I learn fast. So I really think I can do this. And her response to me was, you know, a lot of people work for us that don't have degrees watch the job board and when you see a job that fits your skills apply for it and that just meant so much to me that that i could do that that answered my question that i could do that i could apply without that degree so <clears throat> some two and a half three years later finally a job came up on the job board that i was i felt like i could do and i applied and then later I did get the job, which, you know, was, was what I was reaching for. So that's why this is so personal to me. And when I went to her, I didn't plan that. I didn't plan to go out and say, to go up and talk to her. It just hit me as I was sitting there in that meeting. You know what? I should just go talk to her. And I did before I thought about it, before I got scared, before I let myself talk myself out of it. I just went for it and said, I'm, I'm going to do this. And so I did. So if you don't ask for what you want, nobody can say no. They can't say no if you don't ask. And you will get some no's, but you will also get some yeses. So just remember that. If you don't ask for what you want, you're, it'll be really hard to get it. So um, ask for it if, if that's what you need to do. But that's why this is so personal to me. Um, I met a lady named Maria Rodriguez at a circulation conference. Um, there's a conference up in uh, Wisconsin, um, and it's called um, Back to Circulation. And Maria works for Harvard. And um, she, uh, I'm sorry, not Harvard, MIT, my apologies. She works for MIT and she worked in the library and she didn't have a degree. And I was just floored by the fact that she could work for MIT without a degree in the library. Um, but she has worked herself up. She's a facilities administrator now. Um, I haven't seen her in several, several years. I don't know if she's gotten a degree yet or not. Um, but um, I, the fact that she started out without that degree was amazing to me. And um, I want to share with you that if somebody can work for MIT without a degree, that, that's a pretty good, pretty big statement to me that they that there are jobs out there that you can find and you can get without that degree. When I got to GPLS, <clears throat> one of our benefits was educational um, reimbursement or educational funding. So as soon as I could, I enrolled in college and I now have an associate's degree in um, library science and I am uh, in the process of a bachelor's degree. Um, I'm taking a hiatus right now, but I am in the process of getting a bachelor's degree, most likely in business management or accounting or something along those lines. Um, so. Your age doesn't have to play a factor. I'll turn 60 years old this year um, and you can still go to school. You can still get that degree and it can still benefit you in some way. I'm hoping mine might benefit me when I get ready to retire so that if I want or need to work in a different job after I retire, that I'll have something to kind of fall back on that, to help me do that. Um, but you know, who knows? Who knows where it'll take me? You never know. Okay. These are some jobs that I looked up 
on um, several different websites um, ads for jobs that are in libraries or in other um, industries that don't require that degree. And I was just going to go over a few of them to show you how things can be worded um, to let you know that you can apply. I'm sorry that that just um, I'm going to have to change. OK, the Clayton State one, it um, the required qualification is a bachelor's degree or two years of appropriate computer experience. So it tells you right there, the bachelor's degree is great, but if you've got two years of appropriate computer experience, that's good too. And appropriate could mean a lot of things. It might not be in a library setting. It could be any kind of computer experience that that would fit for what they are looking for. And you don't know what that is until you read the rest of the job description or you apply and go for an interview. And then you'll know if it's what they're looking for, if you're what they're looking for. So if it says a degree or, then that means you, you're, you're good to apply for it. Um, a network technician for Forsyth County. Um, hold on, let me... Let me just read this out to you. This one, um, the requirements are a bachelor's degree in, in a related field or a high school diploma slash GED with two years of recent information technology experience. So again, that one says or. I really like the fact that they included a high school diploma slash GED. That lets you know that, hey, if you didn't even graduate high school, but you got your GED and you have this experience, you're still good to go. You don't have to worry about that. Many times people do worry that that is not sufficient. A GED is not as sufficient as a high school diploma. And in some places it may not be. But um, there are a lot of people who get GEDs that are very, very intelligent. And maybe they were homeschooled and they got their GED instead of a high school diploma. Um, there, there's a lot of other ways besides dropping out of high school to get your GED. <clears throat> um, now, this is Mongo Database Administrator. Um, this is a computer company. And my computer is being slow at the moment. There it goes. All right, this one. Um, doo -doo -doo, where did it go? This is a remote job. One they want you to do at home. It looks like it's for Allstate Insurance Company. Um, Let me, I'm having to scroll through a couple here. I thought that was right at the top. They may have taken it down since I put this presentation together. They may have filled the position. Um, anyway, it's, it's a remote job. So even if there's a job that um, you want, you want to work, but you don't want to go into an office. There are a number of companies now after the pandemic that are still having remote workers or have realized that paying for office space and all the utilities and all the things that go with it are not as valuable as having those workers and they can work from home and get their jobs done. There's a lot of ways um, that they can keep track of you to let, to know whether you're actually working and getting your job done and performing up to their, their um, standards. I believe this one said something about um, the fact that they work remotely, but they are on um, a web like, um, oh shoot, <laughs> they're on a, a web interface where they can, can interact with each other all day long. A Zoom, excuse me, a Zoom or something like that. So I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think that's what that one said. Um, here's one in a school system. Guilford County Schools in Greensboro, North Carolina. I wanted to pick some that were not just all in Georgia here. <clears throat> a systems administrator. 
and the qualifications on this one um, also read um, the, the minimum qualifications. <clears throat> They're broken down um, into different categories, such as physical requirements, data conception, re requires the ability to compare and or judge the readily observable functional structure and composition of characteristics of data, people, and things. Um, interpersonal communication, language ability, intelligence, verbal aptitude, numeric aptitude, uh, formal aptitude, excuse me, form, not formal, um, manual dexterity, color discrimination, requires the ability to differentiate between colors and shades of colors. Um, so somebody that is colorblind might not be suited for this job. Um, temperament and physical communication. Um, and then the um, knowledge and skills abilities, the general knowledge of software, copyrights of the school system, general knowledge of techniques used in systems and al analysis and design. And nowhere in here does it go on to say you need a, a degree. You need any, it doesn't give you any educational qualifications in that. So that's wide open. Anybody can apply for that job someone who has a master's degree or someone who ha doesn't have a degree, um, you could apply for that job. Um, being in a school system, I would think they would have great benefits. And um, one thing you would do want to look for is that ability to get um, tuition reimbursement should you want to pursue that degree after you get the position um, to help you advance later on through, through the company or in another company or however you want to do it. Um, <clears throat> your skills may prove to be good enough that you don't need that degree, um, but it may be helpful if you get it at some point. This is one I just found interesting. It's the Special Agent Cybersecurity Technology Backgrounds. I mean, who doesn't want to work for the FBI, right? that true crime stuff. Okay. And this one, um, it also said, hang on one second, my, got to get it to, Um, this one, the salary starts out at like $78,000 a year. So there's some really great salaries out there too. Um, you need to send in your resume specifically noting relevant work experience and associated start and end dates. Um, you have to go to their website to apply. I can't, it's scrolling funny on me here. Um. There we go, let's show more. Uh, the, the ad is on Glassdoor. I think, uh, if you like to calculate, um, um, okay. Um, you must complete the special agent selected systems um, uh, exam pass and pass it. A mentally, mentally and physically challenging process designed to find only, oh, sorry. Again, I'm sorry, my dog is barking. My apologies. Um, to, to meet the off, meet the needs of the FBI, special agents rarely return to their processing office. Applicants would ensure their families are prepared for and support for this move. 
um, you may have to move around a lot so that you would, you know, work in different places a lot or be away from home a good bit. And they tell you all that up front, but they also tell you um, that your key requirements is you have to be a U.S. citizen. You need to be at least 23 years old and have not reached your 37th birthday on appointment. So you can't be older than 37 to apply. You have uh, two years of full-time professional work experience, um, a, a valid driver's license, um, and be able to obtain a top secret SCI clearance. So again, nothing in there says anything about a degree or educational requirements. So they're pretty, they're pretty open to it, um, to whatever, you know, skills that you have. So you, if you have skills, don't be afraid to show them. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Those of you that are introverts and many librarians are, um, Get the confidence you need in yourself and step out of your box and say, you know what, if I don't ask, I won't get that job. So if it's something you're really looking for, if you want to move up in your library, if you want to move up in some other way, step out and ask for it. And if you think you need that degree, figure out ways to get that degree. There's plenty of um, grants. Um, course, we know there's plenty of student loan money out there, um, but try to find ways that you can get it that, that are affordable to your budget. Um, a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of companies do offer educational reimbursement. Um, even Kroger offers educational reimbursement. McDonald's offers educational reimbursement. So if you can step out of that box and, and get a get a position or a job in a place that offers that educational reimbursement, it might be worth your time for the for the three or four years to do that. Um, if that's what you think you need to get the position that you are ultimately wanting to reach. Um, oops, excuse me, went too fast there. Okay, <clears throat> where can you get experience? Because a lot of them will ask for experience. And that's kind of the catch-22. How can I get experience if everybody wants experience? Well, think of, think outside of the box again. Small businesses, startup companies, open source projects like Evergreen that you can do in your spare time. You don't have to do that on your company's spare time. You can do it in your spare time and put that in your portfolio. Then you can say, I've been working with this open source project or these open source projects for two years. There's your two years experience. Certifications from companies like Microsoft, Cisco, or Oracle. A lot of companies will go for those certifications instead of degrees. Um, technical schools will offer certification courses a lot of times. Um, <clears throat> so you could go that route boot camp style training programs. There are some boot camp style training programs that last maybe six weeks or, or something like that, that you can get um, a certification from, that you can get you know some experience from. And then your online language courses, and by that I mean computer languages. There are plenty of computer language courses online that you can look into to see, you know, some that they some of them do cost. Um, to be honest with you, I can't say that any of them are free, but look and see what's out there and find some and then do some coding on your own. Again, on your free time, do something, make your own website, um, make a website for a company, even if, you know, you don't have to give it to them. They didn't have to ask you to do it. Just make a website, do something that you can show that you can code and that you can do things. And again, put that in your portfolio. And those those are some ideas of places to get experience to get the position that you want in a technical field, especially. Um, really, in any field, you could a lot of these would work for a lot of things. So, okay. <clears throat> so where do you want to go? 
what job, what position do you want as you go up? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask some, uh, you to respond either in chat or if you'll click the button to ask to speak, we will be happy to let you do that. But where is it you want to go in your career? Is there anybody that has a goal already set for themselves that they want to achieve in their career? A place you want to go as you go up the ladder? Are you all just happy where you are doing what you can do? I am close enough to retirement that I can honestly say I am very happy in my current position. Um, I don't feel the need to move up any more than what, where I am. I'm very happy with what I do. I enjoy what I do. And it, it will probably carry me to retirement, which is probably within, you know, not too far away. I mean, not like tomorrow or next year or anything, but, um, you know, before too much longer, I, I can start looking at retiring. So, but, but that's me. So where are you? Is there anybody that can tell me where they might want to, uh, to go with their career? Okay. I kind of put you on the spot there. Marie says she's currently happy wherever she is. However, I'm always willing to learn more. Thank you, Marie. And I just realized I kind of put you on the spot and you might not want to say anything because you, you, your boss might be listening or something like that. I'm, I apologize. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but in the technical world, there are so many things that you can do that do not require degrees. You can, um, that, and some of them you would think you would need a degree, a computer support specialist, a data, data analyst, help desk analyst, computer programmer, web developer, IT manager, computer software engineer, cyber security specialist, software ar architect, all these things, you you know, they're out there and they're reachable and obtainable um, if you don't have that degree and if you, if that's not the route you choose to pursue. Um, I was going to say something and it slipped my mind. I'm sorry. So figure out, that's your first thing. Um, let's see. Keen says, um, he is currently happy where I am, but if positions open above me, I want to be ready if needed. Always willing to learn more. Great. Um, Joanne says she's pretty happy where her path is, but always wants to learn more. And that's fantastic. Being willing to learn, being willing to say, I can do that. Um, even though it doesn't fall under your preview, if there's something that's being asked to be done and you can do it, say, I can do that. Be the person who's willing to do um, that extra whatever, and it proves your skills that much more. Um, so um, always be willing to learn more and to step up more. If your supervisor or your coworker has skills that you don't have, and you have the opportunity to shadow them on a project or something, if you're working on a project with them and your work that you're doing doesn't is different from what they're doing, but they're both important, then do yours and maybe shadow them to learn a little bit more about what's going on and the processes and what what it is maybe you need to learn. Do you need to learn a computer language? Do you need to learn about computer parts? What is it you need to learn to maybe climb up that ladder a little bit more? Okay. If you don't get anything else from today, take this with you. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. It's only when you accept everything you are and that you aren't that you will truly succeed. Take time to sit down and figure out what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? We all have weaknesses. Figure out what those are. Improve on those if you can. Some of them, there's some things I will never be good at. Um, car repair. <laughs> I will never be good at car repair. Construction. I will never be good at anything like that. 
those things, number one, they don't interest me. And I just have a difficult time learning things that I'm not interested in. But those are not required for my job position. So think about what it is that you want and what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And I know almost every interview I have set in, they've asked me, what are your weaknesses? So know what they are. Because when you sit there and go, well, um, it looks like you're saying, you know, I don't think I have any weaknesses, but we all have weaknesses. And being able to acknowledge them and admit them will take will take you a long way. So figure out what your weaknesses are in your current position or in your current in the in the position you're going for. Um, I think one of my weaknesses that I exp expressed when I interviewed for the Pines Help Desk Manager was that sometimes I don't know how to word things appropriately um, in a response so they come across clearly or um, professionally. So sometimes I'm too blunt. I, I just say it, and that's that's always not a good thing. Sometimes you have to soften things and um, make them uh, a little bit, you know, less direct and less blunt. And that was that's one of my weaknesses is that I am blunt. I try not to be blunt in writing. I, find, I try not to be that direct. Um, but sometimes when I'm talking in person, I can be very direct. And, you know, that's not always a bad thing. But it's not always a good thing either. So that is one of my weaknesses. So know what your weakness is in the position that you're going for so that you are ready to answer that question. Um, there is a lot of online um, things where you can um, get coaching on interviews and interview questions, what interview questions will be asked, where you can just kind of prepare yourself for an interview as well. And if you're prepared and ready to answer questions and have answers prepared in your head, um, then that it comes across um, as a more positive, um, a more positive interview and it will, it, that will help you a lot. So if you don't take anything else from it, Know your strengths and weaknesses, and you can truly succeed. Well, should have, I should have turned the page. <laughs> there we go. Um, another thing, a uh, saying that I found was, you get in life what you have the courage to ask for. That's the other point I wanted to make. You get in life what you have the courage to ask for. If you don't ask for it, you can't be told no. And you can't be told yes. So be sure to ask for what you want. If it's what you want, you know, you deserve to have the things you want. If it's clothing that you want, you, you, you have, I mean, I have no problem saying, oh, I like that. I would like to have that. Well, so have that same attitude about your job. That job looks good. I'd like to have that job. Okay, well, how are you going to get it? You're going to have to put yourself in there. Make sure you apply for it. I, you don't always have to go up to somebody and ask them for the job or ask them, you know, like um, maybe the same way that I went up and said, I want to work for Pines. You don't have to have that. Make sure you apply for the job. Make sure your cover letter goes over um, saying, I want this job. Make sure that they know that you're, you are truly interested and want the job. Just applying for the job doesn't always say that. Um, the other day I heard, um, it was, a, I forget which talk show it was that I was listening to, but I heard that one of the problems in staffing right now is people apply for the job and then they call them for an interview and the inter they, can't, they can't get in touch with the person. They, the person just disappears. They can't get in touch with them to get them in for an interview. So, you know, you wonder why people even applied for the job. And it's not just occasionally. They were saying this is a big problem right now. You can't get them to come in for an interview. I don't know what the underlying of that is. I don't know why that is. Um, 
but make sure that if you do apply for a job to let them know that you want that job. If you do happen to take another position in the interim of being asked for an interview, still answer your phone, still answer your email and say, thank you. Thank you for getting back to me. I have currently accepted a different position, um, but I do appreciate your time in reading my resume or whatever. Be as, as polite as you can be. Um, and let them know that you appreciate because you never know that when you might want to apply to that company again. So don't burn your bridges. Make sure that you take the time to respond to those people um, and let them know that you appreciated their time of looking at your resume, even if you're not still interested in the position. So have the courage to, to apply for that job, to ask for that job, to let them know that you want that job. And then follow through, follow through and being polite and having, having good manners. Okay, I've got some links and resources for you. Um, the American Library Association, if you're looking for something within the library world, which is where we all are, GPLS has a job board that carries jobs for not just Georgia, but surrounding states. Um, there, there's more than just Georgia on there. Um, of course, you've got your other things, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Monster, Career Builder. That, you know, that's just a few of the places that you can put your resume out to say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Um, those are all great. I like those. I like the fact that you can put your resume out there and somebody that's looking for a person can come to you and say, hey, this person looks good. Let me get, let me get the, let me call them and see if they're interested in a job. And you know, this might be part of the underlying problem of people not responding when they want, um, want to interview them is that they put their resume out there on one of these sites and in the interim have gotten a job. I mean, how long has their resume been out there? Um, and they've gotten a job, and so they just don't answer. They don't have their good business manners clothes on, and they don't answer and tell them that, you know, they're not interested any longer, and they don't take their resume down. So um, that may be some of the underlying problem, but, you know, let people know that you're not interested if they do contact you. But these are just some of the basic resources, and you, you all probably know these things. You, probably, you might even know a lot of the other things I've already told you today. Because um, a lot of it's just good common sense. You know, use your manners, ask for what you want, and, you know, that kind of thing. These are some other resources that you could have. Um, these are more, um, uh, they help you with, they have job listings, but they also help you with um, interview and uh coaching and uh, questions and resume writing and they help you with a lot of other things if you need the help. I'm sure not all of those are free um, free things but they're out there if you need them. Robert Half Talent Solutions, this is one site that I really really like. This man is so down to earth in my opinion. Um, it's common sense he really helps you out. Um, I've, I've used his site a number of times um, just for um, coaching for myself, just for um, finding a solution for myself on with something I have a weakness with. How do you do this? How, how can I, you know, word my resume correctly? Or how can I do something that, you know, makes it look better or sound better? So, um, but Robert Half is just, he's got a lot of resources on his site, um, and he, it's just a very, a very good site. I, I encourage you, if you are looking to grow in your career, check out Robert Half's site and um, see, see what he has to offer there. Um, LinkedIn Talent Solutions, that goes with the LinkedIn job board, of course. Um, Live Career, The Muse, The Recruiter. So all of those um, have a lot of resources out there that you can, can use to analyze um, and help you grow with your job and your position. 
Um, <clears throat> and before I finish up, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Evergreen too. Parting words. Whatever you think you are, you are more than that. Never say, I am just a para pro. You're not just a para pro. You're a para pro. You're a para professional. Because what you do in your job is important. Libraries don't run without para professionals. Without the frontline staff, libraries don't run. If they required MLS degrees for everybody that worked at a library, they would never have enough staff. Never. So realize that you are important and your job is important. So you're not just anything. You're not just a mom or just a dad. You are a mom or a dad. Those are big things and you are that. So own what you are because you are more than what you think you are. Now, how can all of this apply to Evergreen and the Open Source Project? Well, I can't write code. I can't even read code. <laughs> I can't. When it comes to a computer, give me a keyboard and a screen and show me what you want me to do and I can go from there. But how can I help in the Evergreen community? Well, as a frontline staff member of Circulation, I can test when they put in bug fixes. I can test bugs to see if I get the same result as the person that um, submitted the bug. Um, I can submit bugs. Um, I can do all kinds of things on the, on the front end of what the coders do. When it comes time to looking at does this code work, I can help with all of that. So any of your frontline staff can help with this. You can help with this. You don't have to be a coder to, to do to help with the Evergreen project. You don't even have to know anything about open source. Um, that was far, completely foreign to me before um, I was introduced to Evergreen. So um, just know that there is something you can do if you're interested in being part of the Evergreen community. And obviously we all are because we're here. We wouldn't be at this conference if we weren't interested. So when, if you are, are new into the Evergreen community and you haven't, tomorrow is a, um, let's see, is it bug squashing or what is tomorrow, Elizabeth, part of the um, conference? It is hack hackfest. 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 Hack hack yep. That's where um, the the um, coders all get together and they go in and they talk about things they want to fix or need to be fixed or whatever, and they'll put bug um, bug fixes in and they'll say this needs to be tested. You can test those bug fixes. I don't test the cataloging ones and I don't test the OPAC ones unless it has to do with searching. Um, from the patron standpoint of view, for the most part, um, you can uh, thank you, Elizabeth. She put the link for that in there. But you can be part of Hackfest without being a coder. You don't have to be a coder. There's so much that can be done. Even just the small task of adding tags to bugs. Um, you can look at it and say, is this circulation or is this cataloging? And you can put circulation tags on a bug. Um, <clears throat> So just something very simple you know, that, like that that you can do. I say very simple, that's difficult for me, but I mean, my 10 year old granddaughter can probably work my computer better than I can. So, um, you know, you just, the, our kids are growing, the, the, um, the generation now is growing up with computers and can do more with them than, than we ever even thought about probably. So anyway. Um, but know what you're, know you can do any of these things. You don't have to be a coder to be part of Evergreen. And that's one of the hardest things to get across. I encourage when I do my circulation trainings, I encourage frontline staff to test. Um, we do have our own test server. And I say, go in there and play. Break it for me. Try to break it. And let me know if you do. Um, I encourage them to get out there and 
click buttons and figure out what things are on a test server so that it does not interfere with production. Um, but everybody can do something in the Evergreen community. Anybody that is interested in being part of the project and the open source can do something. So, um, you know, you just just go out there and put your foot out and, and see what you can do. Log in tomorrow and say, hey, I'm Don Dale. Uh, I work circulation. What can I do to help? I guarantee you somebody will answer you. Somebody will say, you can look at these bugs and, tell, and put tags on them. Or this bug needs to be tested to see if if you get the same results the person that reported it did. Um, because sometimes it's a local setting, a, a system setting. Um, Pines might have a setting that Missouri doesn't have. And so it might look like a bug on my end, but it's not on Missouri's end because they're not using a setting like that. Um, so a lot of times that's what it is. And Sometimes those do need patches, and sometimes it's working as expected. You just didn't expect it to work that way, and now you know how it should work. So you can test all these things. You can do all these things, and you can make them happen. They need, we need people to do these things. So um, encourage your frontline staff to do these types of things as well if they're interested, if they want to be more, a bigger part of the Evergreen community. Um, people that want to invent, advance in their library or in their career, this kind, of, this kind of knowledge of working with an open source project and helping with Hackfest and get uh, bug squashes and whatever else that, that, that do these things, um, you can put that on your resume. And it looks great on the resume. You did these things. Don't forget. Own what you did. Own what you do. And don't let it don't let it slip you. And, um, that reminds me of something I was going to say earlier that um, when I was talking about experience, um, don't sell yourself short on your experience either. Um, if you're young, a young professional, um, maybe you graduated high school just a couple of years ago. And you were, um, you volunteered or you, one of your classes of, or whatever in high school was working in the library for a class period every day for one semester. That's experience. Don't sell yourself self short on your experience. If you volunteered in the library and shelved books, that's experience. Don't sell yourself short. Don't forget about the little things that you did that were experience that will that you can put on your that you can include in that two years or whatever they're asking for all of those things are experience so don't forget about all those if you took a computer class in high school and created code for something that's experience put that on your resume um so or in college or wherever don't forget about the things you do on your free time if you just enjoy working with computers and you go in and do something that other people could use, you know, create an app or, or whatever, don't leave those things out. Those are experience. Um, include those in your portfolio. So, so whatever you think you are, you're more than that. Don't sell yourself short. Whatever you do, be willing to ask for what you want whether it's just putting in a resume with a great cover letter or it, approaching someone and saying, how can I get a job in your company? What, what is it I need to do because this is what I want to do? Um, just know that you are more than you think you are and that you are intelligent. If you weren't intelligent, you wouldn't be here. So just know those things. Okay. We've got about 10 minutes left for questions. Again, if you want to put them in chat or if you want to um, ask to speak, feel free. Um, this is my contact information. These slides will be available. Um, feel free to contact me anytime you would like, and I'll be glad to do my best to help you out in whatever it is you're looking for. Um, so anybody, does anybody have any questions? 
or want to say anything, add to my presentation. Disclaimer, I may steal it, but. <laughs> I will say this was very helpful, Dawn. I really appreciate well, uh, you. I, your I'm positive gonna, attitude. <laughs> well, I always wonder if it is helpful. Um, and, and I'm glad to know that it is. Thank you. Um, Albert is asking, do you have any tips on gaining management or leader experience in a professionally relevant way without already being in such a position? Probably one of the ways you can do that, Albert, is being the person to say, I can do that. If your supervisor um, has a project that needs to be done, be willing to step out there and take that project. Um, if you have a coworker that um, comes to you and asks for assistance, you know, always be willing to assist. Um, never use the words, that's not my job. Never do that. I cleaned a bathroom one time when I was working at Home Depot. Yes, because that needed to be done and my manager was looking for somebody to do it. I said, I'll do it. That will gain you so much respect when you're the person that says, I can do it. Um, and being a mentor to others, um, that will show, I understand Angie's still cleaning them. I just don't work there anymore, but still cleaning them. I clean enough of them. Um, but yes, that will show that you are willing to do the job and get it done. One of the best things a manager can do is be will, is always be willing to do the job that that you are asking somebody else to do. So if you're expecting your staff to clean the bathroom, then you've got to be willing to clean it too. Um, so that will go a long way in showing that, that you are the person that can get something done. I will do it because they know that if nobody else will, you will. Um, Angie says, don't ask someone to do something that you won't do instead. Exactly, Angie. You have got to be able to get in the mud with them. Um, you can be a leader from any role. Yes, you can, Elizabeth. You can be a leader from any role just by being a good mentor and a good example of doing the job correctly. And, um, you know, if you're not in a management position, you don't want to correct your uh, fellow coworkers necessarily. But you, it might not be a bad thing sometimes to say, this might work a little better. Or if they do ask you for help, just be sure that you are willing to help. Marie says, don't be scared to try new things outside your box. You never know what you can do unless you try. Exactly. Exactly. If they're asking you to create a bulletin board and you have never done a bulletin board, you don't even think you can do a bulletin board, give it your best. Ask somebody else's opinion. Ask somebody else for their help. But give it your best shot. And that's all you can do is give it your best. And if you do that, you will do great. So Albert said, thanks. I appreciate it, Albert. I, I do hope that this was helpful and will give you some confidence in yourself. A positive attitude goes a long, long way. Try to keep that positive attitude. Um, one of the things I try to not to do is use negative words. Um, and when you think about that is uh, instead of saying, I can't do it, you would say, I've never done that, but I can try. So think about your positive words instead of negative words. And, and that will help you as well. So um, thank you all very much for your extra tips, too. That's, that's things I didn't really say. <clears throat> Elizabeth says, even if you lead some initiative in the community, claim it. I always see that leadership experiences as a hiring manager and those types of experiences are even better than just work related. Exactly. So even if it's not in the library, if it's in your church, if it's in your running group, if it's in your um, child's uh, daycare, you know, uh, play dates, scheduling the play dates, keeping everybody, um, team mom for the, for the baseball team, claim all those things. They're always great. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Joanne. Um, Nicole says she's worked in libraries for 20 years, but I always say I'm just a library clerk. 
clerk, not a real librarian. Well, you know, Joanne, you may not have that MLS that says you're a librarian, but you're not just a clerk. You're a library clerk. And you're an experienced library clerk. Nicole says she appreciates don't sell yourself short in referring to your position. Exactly. Because remember, libraries won't run without the people that work on the front line that don't necessarily have those those degrees. Your experience is a lot. And if you can, you will have patrons that will come in and ask for you if you do a good job. Not because you're doing anything you shouldn't be doing, but because they know you will find an answer for them if it's possible, if you can. And if you can't find an answer, be willing to look for somebody who can give an answer. That was, when I worked part, I worked part time at Home Depot as a second job when my daughter was in college. And um, what probably got me that job was they said, do you know anything about home repair, hardware? And I was like, no, but I know how to find I know how to find somebody that can answer the question that, you know, I know how to get the right person. If I don't know anything about electricity, I can get the electrical person to come answer that question so yes find an answer if you if you can't if you can't answer it find an it find somebody that can help you get an answer so yes the biggest thing don't sell yourself short believe in yourself and know that you can do it and you can Okay, well, I can hang around for a few more minutes unless somebody else has something to say or a question. And like I said, be sure my contact information will be on the slides. Um, I'll be willing to answer any. Um, if your library has access to tutor.com, I've used it to submit cover letters, resumes for feedback within 24 hours, and they have inter interview tutoring. Great. That's one that I might add to my list, Allison. Thank you very much. But yes, having somebody look over your resume and look over your cover letter is, is a really good idea. Many times when I even write an email, I'll have somebody look at it because I'm afraid I'll be too blunt or too um, crass when I'm answering. Especially if it's something that maybe is rubbing me the wrong way. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate it. Well, I do hope you all enjoy the rest of the conference. Um, I've had a great time so far, and I, I look forward to the rest of the afternoon. Thank you very much, and thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Dawn.